They said to John, Who are you? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Make straight the way of the Lord. Today is the third is the third Sunday of Advent. Advent is a church season, is the church season in which we prepare our hearts, make them straight, if you will, to receive the miracle of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and to do it in a worthy manner. Appropriately, in our gospel this morning, we see John the Baptist, the great forerunner of the Messiah, who was sent by God to prepare the hearts of the Jewish people for Jesus. Notice that John had a single message Repent. All the Gospels tell us that John prepared the Jewish people for Jesus by preaching a baptism for the repentance of sins. And in fact, if you look at Jesus when he began his ministry in Galilee, you see that his first public statement echoed John's. When he came, He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Why all this emphasis by both John the Baptist and Jesus on repentance? Because we sin. We sin. And our sin blocks the way, blocks God from entering into our hearts and our lives. As a result of the fall of Adam and Eve, we have a natural proclivity towards sin. And just as the sin of Adam and Eve created a great barrier between them and God, so it does for us. Our pride, our stubbornness, our narcissism cuts us off from closeness with God, from the greatest relationship we could possibly have in this life or the next. Isaiah 53 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And in turning to our own way, We have turned away from God's way. We sin. Now, if you don't think that's a big deal, consider this. In a few, in a week, two weeks, we'll be hearing the whole gospel story. And and we'll hear about the the time the angel of the Lord appeared to St. Joseph in a dream. He appeared to St. Joseph to reassure him that the chi- that that Mary was with child because of the holy spirit but the angel did something more than that he also told saint joseph what to name the child the angel said you shall call his name jesus for he will save his people from their sins think about that The name Jesus means God saves. Saves us from what? Saves us from our sins. Sin is such a big deal, and salvation from sin is so important that God entered the world, God entered the world in the humility of an infant, of a child, of a man in order to save us from sin. That's Jesus' central mission. That's what his name means. 
So sin must matter a great deal to God. Yet it is astonishing how many Christians have lost sight of this fact. For some, Jesus is anything but our Savior from sin. He's he's a teacher, a holy man, or a social justice warrior, or he's an inspiring prophet, or he's a nonviolent activist, or he's a dispenser of blessings. But a Savior? I hear people say, ha, sin is no big deal. Sin is so old-fashioned. We live in a world that rejects the reality of sin. A world that trivializes sin. Even inside the church. And in fact, in my opinion, the trivialization of sin, the trivialization of sin is one, if not the biggest problem of the modern church. And the reason is this. Because sin is measured against the holiness of God. Sin is measured against the holiness of God. And when sin is trivialized, we trivialize God's holiness. When sin disappears from our awareness, God disappears too. And we become functionally atheists. And that is the state of the world we live in today. Therefore, John's message is as important for us today as it was in the first century. We must repent for the forgiveness of sins, keeping in mind two things. Jesus is coming at Christmas. We need to be holy and ready to receive him, but also keeping in mind Jesus' second coming not as gentle savior, but as just judge. Are you prepared to stand before Jesus on the terrible day of the Lord? So we must repent. But what is repentance? What is repentance? So first of all, we need to understand that repentance is not an emotion. People commonly mistake the emotion of remorse for the act of repentance, but they're not the same thing. Remorse is strong regret or or anguish for a moral failing, for a sin. Remorse often accompanies repentance, but it's not the same thing. And in fact, it's possible for people to feel remorse and not repent of what they did. So repentance is not an emotion. Rather, it's a decision of the will. Repentance is a decision of the will. In much the same way, love, agape love, is a decision of the will. It's not an emotion. Repentance begins in the will, not the emotions. There are two words in the Bible for repentance. One is Greek, one is Hebrew. The Greek word is metanoia, which means literally change your mind. But I think it's more appropriate to translate it, change your thinking. As in Paul Romans chapter 12 says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We change our minds. We we change our thinking. And that's where repentance starts. With our minds, we learn to distinguish right from wrong, good from evil. And that's called formation of conscience. That's why... Training up our children is so important 
to form their consciences. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Repentance begins in the mind. But repentance doesn't stop there. And the Hebrew word carries that part. John the Baptist told the Pharisees to bear fruit worthy of repentance. Repentance has an active component, too. The Hebrew word means to turn around or turn back. As in you've been living one way and then you realize as your mind, as you understand good and evil better, as you understand God's law better, you realize it's the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. So you decide you want to start living a more holy life, but that decision, which starts in, in, in the will, must be followed by appropriate action for it to be true repentance. So after changing your thinking, you then visibly turn around and your lifestyle changes. The way you act, the way you live changes. You become a new creation in Christ. That is true repentance. So, in conclusion, as Catholics, we're called to follow Jesus. We're called to a life of holiness. We're called to a life of love, of self-sacrificing love. But our proclivity to sin is a daily stumbling block for us. So our walk with the Lord is an ongoing struggle for holiness. Our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. As Paul says in Romans 7, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I will what is right, but I cannot do it, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? But then Paul takes it one step further. He says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ who came to save us from our sins. That's what he's implied there. So fortunately, the church, in its wisdom, makes provision for our struggle with sin. And we call it the sacrament of reconciliation. And it's something available to all of us. The confessional is the place where we make straight the way of the Lord. And I was delighted to see how many people wanted to have confession this morning, and I'll be available after this, after this Mass for a few people that didn't have time, um, and I will hear confessions. I'll hear, them, hear, hear more. The, the Sacrament of Reconciliation includes both steps of repentance. First, by the examination of conscience and by our good confession, we change our thinking. We look at that sheet that includes the Ten Commandments, and we say, ah, oh, I haven't done that. Oh, I have done that. I didn't measure up that way. We change our thinking and we decide, we make a decision and we make a good confession. And then by accepting the priest's penance and a good penance is not a punishment, a good penance is only the first step towards a, a more reformed life, towards a holier life. So whenever I'm in there in the, in the confessional, I'm thinking, okay, this is what was confessed. What's the next step the person should take? How can, how can this person take a step and how can I help this to, to turn, turn back to that other direction? So by accepting the penance and saying the act of, of contrition, we take steps to turn around and bear fruit worthy of repentance. So as we prepare ourselves to encounter God in the miracle of, Chris, of Christmas, be sure, be sure you make one, at least one trip to the confessional. And then, as John the Baptist said, bear fruit 
that befits repentance.